Mic check one, two. Mic check one, two. Mic check one, two. Hello, developers. Zoom always tells me it's preparing for my meeting, but I know I'm live. I just know it. Can you see me? Can you hear me? How are you? Uh oh, I'm going to get some wicked feedback. Hold on, hold on. Let me get situated here. Welcome to another rousing Fish Fry Friday for software developers. My name is Real Tough Candy. Welcome to my channel. Welcome new subscribers. I've been getting a lot of subscribers lately and it's great to see all these new people as well as some of our longtime members. Some people who have been here for over three years. It's crazy to think I've been doing this for three years. So for those people who have put up with me for that amount of time, thank you. Let's go and uh, just give me one second here. I don't like dead air, but I need to get my little settings set up so I can see your guys' comments, what you've been up to. I did state that it is a Friday, so we are going to be going into an awesome weekend this weekend. So exciting that Friday's already here, and we can now enjoy the weekend. It's here! Yes! Okay, where am I on this thing? I know you guys can't, thankfully you guys can't see what I'm doing right now because it's pretty embarrassing. Um, hello, where's the freaking? okay. Can you guys hear me? Is there, there's like a 20 second lag on this thing. Just, just let me know, just blink twice if you're being assaulted with my voice right now. Manage, okay, we're getting closer developers. We're getting closer to this. I have to click like seven things. I know no one cares about this. I just talk a lot when I'm nervous. <laughs> Whoa, we have 27 people in the chat already and seven likes. I just started this thing. Okay, Tech Rally, what's up Randy Miller? I'm live. What's up Randy Miller? Shout out to Randy and all my other YouTube channel members. Why, 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 triple Y dollars. What's up, what's up? Joan favorite, we can hear you. Justin Clark, what's going on? Laszlo, go team manatee. That's, yeah, I still need to inst to uh, add some manatee emojis for, for the Discord and, and this, this chat. By the way, people like Donovan, what's up, Donovan? Donovan, Randy Miller, my YouTube channel members, they have some perks, and one of their perks is custom emojis in the chat. So uh, what did I add? A Wendy's parrot gif or something. There are just some crazy ones there. Uh, the JavaScript logo and a few other ones. So definitely uh, feel free to take advantage of those as the as the mood fits. Marina Nikolai, what's up? Midnight Sun, Gmail user, AGD, AGDJ. The coder formerly known as Gabe the Fifth, what's going on? Pop K Dodge, Jeff Gridley, hi! Milan Gupta, Juan, Hologram Nunchuck, Sandy. Wow, the arcade girl. Lots of people here today, holy smokes. Thanks for joining in today. What's up, Ian? E I just published an article on realtoughcandy.com about TypeScript and TypeScript courses and, you know, what's so good about TypeScript. And as soon as I shared it on Twitter, I, I checked the comments and Ian had dropped a, a comment. So thanks. I, I hardly get any legitimate comments on Real Tough Candy on my website. Uh, so it was really good to see. It was a nice treat. Before we get today's topic started, Got to give some shout outs and then we're going to get into it. Actually, I mean, what what real tough candy lies would be complete without shameless merchandise plugging. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is one of my this is this is glamping. I'm pretty sure you guys can't see that. My green screen right now is out of control. The point being, I got shirts. I got tank tops. I got more tank tops. I got stickers. I got mugs. They won't come broken. This this was this was my doing. Hopefully they'll arrive in one piece. All that and more on Candy Script, my Teespring store. Paradoodly do who's our lovely moderator today. Please share that link for those people who just cannot stay away from some quality merchandise. Now, one more one more announcement, and then we're gonna get into it. Keith Ballinger, shout out to this guy, Keith. I don't know him. N n just randomly popped up on my GitHub the other night. Uh, he is a, he is a new GitHub sponsor. Now, I don't talk about this much, uh, just because it is it is not really relevant to most of what I do on this channel. Um, but you can, as a GitHub member, you can sponsor other people if if they have the thing enabled, the GitHub sponsorship thing enabled, and my button's enabled. So he enabled uh, me to earn an income 
because he sponsored my GitHub page. On my GitHub repo, I have real world JavaScript questions. I have my first portfolio as part of my course there, um, but it's, it's free for anyone. Uh, lots of other repos I have there for the community. Um, and he, he put down some money to sponsor the Real Tough Candy GitHub page. So thank you, Keith. And if you're watching this, please uh, send me an email so I can get you your, your prizes for your tier. You got, you got some pretty good prizes and I want you to take advantage of those. So Keith, I'm sending out the vibes. I'm sending out the message. Thanks. All right, developers, secret weapons for learning how to code. This one, I wanna hear from the audience because we all have our little hacks. We all have our little things. We all have our, our little rituals that help us learn a skill. Now, learning how to code doesn't just stop after your first four months, after your first six months, after your first 12 months. This software development, whether you're a web developer or any other implementation of software developer, iOS, mobile, games, you never stop learning. And, but that's especially true with web development, but all this stuff, you never stop learning. This is a continuously learning career field. And that's what's really exciting about it. It can be overwhelming a lot of times, but for the most part, I love having to stay on my toes and keep current with what's going on. So what I'm saying is these secret weapons, these not so secret weapons we're gonna talk about today, they're not just for newbies because I still use, I still use these things. I'm what, three, four years into this. I've been, I started learning how to code in 2014. I got my first enterprise job in 2018. And I, so yeah, I mean, I haven't been in the industry all that long, but long enough where I'm like, okay, I'm not a newbie anymore. If I had to self-assess, I'd say mid-level developer. I'm at the mid-levels tier. And that's where I'd be comfortable working um, if I were to go back to enterprise, which I'm not, thank the gods. Thank you. Uh, but to each their own. Anyways, so let's get into the first secret weapon. Let me hoist this up here. Books, books, all types of books. White, green, black, purple, command line books. Sorry, Missy Elliott. Um, books are an amazing reference guide. <laughs> that made no sense. Books are amazing. Books are amazing. And I love them so much. If most self-taught developers, we, we use the video based track for, and it's like videos are awesome. Videos are so great. And I wouldn't be able, I'm, I mean, I might even be still studying software development if I didn't have videos to help me. But books was where books, gave me a new perspective. And I also shared information that sometimes isn't great for video courses. Like a lot of the theoretical stuff just isn't great for a video course. There's one course in mind that is an exception. That's Tony Ellis's JavaScript, the weird parts. It's the driest video course you will ever take. And it's amazing, but most times that stuff is better suited for a book. And when you switch it up a little, it just, it opens up a different part of your mind and books also give you time to learn really at your own pace because even videos, they, it is a self-taught way of learning, but they're kind of not at your own pace. It all depends on how, on the delivery and the speed of the instructor, you know, the organization, even if you can manipulate the video controls, there's still only like four options. And then just like with a book, you can go, you can, you can switch it up. You can, read a book anywhere whereas with the video eh, it depends if like you're in a noisy place and you can't wear earbuds earbuds <laughs> earbuds for whatever reason books are a lot more portable in my opinion and there are just so many good ones out there that aren't video courses there there are a lot of books out there that are just they don't have a video equivalent so the first one I want to talk about, I'm not going to go like through my whole library because it's absolutely massive, um, but I have a huge, I got, I got quite a few books this week arrived, who that arrived at RTC headquarters. I can't even speak because pages just get me so worked up. So this is, this is one of my first web developer books that I got, A Smarter Way to Learn JavaScript. And when people ask me, what should I study? How, what should I use to learn JavaScript? 
this is the this is what I say. Whether above every above everything above everything, if you're having a hard time learning JavaScript, check out this book. This was an absolute game changer for me and many others. And our mod Paradoodly Do, I recommended these books to Paradoodly Do as well. She's a code newbie. She's been digging it because uh, this guy Mark Myers he also has one on HTML and CSS. So what you do, let me just I don't know. Can you guys see this? what you do you read a chapter and it's like it's literally like a two-page thing read a chapter that's a page or two and then you go to this website and do the interactive exercises full disclosure some of these exercises are kind of janky they're kind of wonky but if you can get past that i've never i there's nothing that compares to this book and so if you are like most of us uh, and have ha have a few video courses in your arsenal in, in JavaScript isn't clicking or you want to start with the basics, check out this book. Check out his HTML and CSS book too. That is what I recommend. And it's, it's cheaper than if you do like an annual subscription to one of these platforms. Uh, Udemy is always cheap, okay? Their, their prices were born 99. The prices were born 9.99. Their prices will die 9.99. But even still, um, I think a lot of those intro to JavaScript courses, they're just too long. They're just too much. Like 30 hours of JavaScript, that's gonna take months. Why not just start with the basics? So here we're, um, this arrived a few weeks ago. This book is awesome. This is on um, No Starch Press. This is the Linux command line. I, I, there is a lot of magic going on in the command line that I haven't tried yet that I'm, I'm just so looking forward to. Most of my computer life, half or better, is spent on the command line doing something. This is a great book. Um, but just to show you, like, you know, talking about how learning is not just a six month thing, it's not just a 12 month thing. Like these books arrived this week, all this week. So this arrived Monday or Tuesday. This is refactoring JavaScript, turning bad code into good, good code. I honestly haven't even looked at this one yet, but uh, refactoring JavaScript is refactoring is tough as it is if we're talking about like major projects and this was from 2017 so it is a little more modern and i wanted to learn more about refactoring specifically for javascript and this got good reviews so i decided to pick it up i don't know has anyone read this let me know and it's on o'reilly they're pretty good o'reilly's a pretty good publisher they do have some stinkers like some of their stuff is not that good they're no, they're no, uh, no starch press, that's for sure. Then, um, what else? This came Monday or Tuesday. Uh, head first design patterns, dude. This is an awesome freaking book. I tried reading this one a few years ago, and it was totally beyond me. This is, if you are needing to learn more about object oriented programming, this book is awesome. It's not for newbies, but I would say beginner plus to intermediate would would benefit from this. The code samples are in Java, um, but this is all. This is just an example of like I don't know what it's in. What is it an example? <laughs> I can't talk. Why can't I talk today? This is an example of me believing I would never be able to understand any of this three years ago, four years ago, and then coming back now and being like, wow, this is a really great book and I'm getting everything they're saying in here. So, oh, also Gwen Stefani apparently now codes, which is, you know, even better. That came, and then these two came the same day. These came yesterday or Wednesday, clean code. I've been meaning to get this on paperback for a while. Uh, this is by Uncle Bob, Robert Martin, Bob Martin. It's a good one. This is, and these, most of these head first, clean code, those are in Java, which is fine. You can pretty much understand. My first language was Java, so I pretty much understand what they're saying in that. But here's what's cool about this one. This is also, uh, this is a Martin Fowler book. Martin Fowler is pretty renowned, and this is refactoring, improving the design of existing code. This was an expensive book. This was a hardcover textbook style, but you wanna know what's cool about this book is that the examples are in JavaScript. 
you rarely see that in a textbook. Most schools are teaching Java or Python or C++, which is why you see a lot of these books written in Java, Python, or C++, at least these, these academic books. But this is like the first, this is really the first academic book that I've seen that is written in JavaScript. So yeah, I read two refactoring books. Um, you know, this is obviously the exception here because it does say JavaScript, but this isn't an academic book. So whether you're a code newbie, intermediate, advanced, there are books out there. Some people just don't like books and I, I totally get that. I totally get that. If, if you can't read a book and you're just totally turned off and you know you're gonna be not succeeding with it, then, you know, stick to whatever else. But books are really a secret weapon. And again, so many of these topics just aren't appropriate for videos. Uh, refactoring JavaScript might actually be a really good course. And that's something I'm thinking about doing later uh, when I launch realtoughcandy.io, which by the way, Tech Rally was asking about this in the Discord, any details about, real, about your learning platform, about, about my learning, <laughs> learning platform. And I said, yes, thank you for asking. So July, we're gonna be opening it up to founding members, people who have been big supporters of this channel, patrons, YouTube channel members, depending on your tier. Some people are gonna get a lifetime access. Some people are gonna get six months. Some people are gonna get a discount, um, but I wanna take care of my people who have been supporting me. So uh, you, whatever, whatever it is, whether you've been here for three years or three months, um, if you've been a supporter of the channel and I have your contact information, which People who do support me, I, I do have it. Uh, you'll be getting an email about that uh, coming up in July. So that's gonna be open. You're gonna be the founding members. And then in August or September, we're gonna go live to the public. We're gonna be starting off with five courses. And then every two to three months, I'm gonna have a publishing schedule where every two to three months, you can see uh, you know, a year in advance what courses are dropping when. Um, and this is gonna be a little different from other learning platforms because yes, there are technical courses there, but the ultimate goal for each of these courses is to bring you one step closer to leveling up, landing a job and getting a raise. That's, that's, that's all I'm focusing on. That's all I want. I'm not teaching anything, just teach it. So the, the courses are very specific and they're very, they're, they're laser focused on achieving those goals and helping you advance to the next tier. And so planning it has taken a lot of time and it's been you know, floating in my, my mind for quite some time because I mean, when you think about it, it's like, oh Lord, do we really need another educational platform? Like that's, what's, that's what Udemy is for, right? Well, yes, but also no, because I've met thousands of developers who just, they have lots of Udemy courses but they want more, they need a little bit more, they need that extra bit. And so realtoughcandy.io is gonna be that extra bit. That's gonna be a, a big bit, a big bit in their bite. So yeah, really looking forward to it. And we're gonna have some really good, awesome extra perks too. We're gonna to have guides, um, coupons for my books, like free, free books for, for accompanying these courses. We're also gonna be doing monthly workshops bi-monthly workshops, meetups, uh, the works. And again, all coming back to leveling up, landing a job and getting a raise. So we're gonna be talking more about the course list. I don't know when, before July, but that is what I've been working on a lot in the time I have to work on that stuff. So thank you everyone for your support. And thanks Tech Rally for re reminding me to you know tell people about this instead of just having them assume that that it's going going on. Okay, what do you developers think about books? What are some books I should be reading? Because there are a lot here that, I, that I've shown in other live streams, but what, what should I snag? Put something on my reading list. Let's go to the comments. German Shepherd Channel Info Channel. I like your username. Lee Forrest, man, we got a lot of people here. Dickie's Beer Reviews, what's up Dickie? PBR. I love how you have the X through the PBR. That's really funny. Green screen drowns it out. Yeah, I'm sorry. This, um, darn it. Yeah, there's nothing much I can do about it. But anywho, let's go to the comments. 
Madeline Caples says, if a book has examples in Java or some other language, is it possible to follow for someone coming from JavaScript? It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Let me see if I can show you without blasting out the page. Let me show you an example of what Clean Code has. Let's see. So let's go here. Let me just make sure you guys can see. OK, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. OK, OK. Can you guys see this? OK. <laughs> it won't work. It just won't work. It's going to be really tough. Um, I would. It's a hard call. It's a hard call. You may be able to just peck through it. Sometimes the books go line by line or like block by block, statement by statement, and explain what's going on. Uh, but not knowing the language of the samples, even just at a basic level, is it's going to take a lot away from your learning experience. And unfortunately, again, most textbooks, most of these big, big type, massive books, they're doing it in Java, C++, or Python. Usually I see it in Java, even cracking the coding interview, Java. And it's just, it's frustrating for web developers because we don't normally code in Java. We don't have a reason to learn Java. Unless we went to college or took a Java course for whatever reason. Um, the only reason I'm able to halfway understand what they're saying in your number one, uh, Java was my first language that I studied for a few months before I hit a complete brick wall. And number two, uh, you know, being a little more experienced. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a senior, I'm not a 20 years in the business, but picking up a different language for me is, is largely just a matter of syntax. Yes, there's are, there are different things. There are things in Java that you, you just don't see in JavaScript, for example. But for the most part, I can, what I don't, what I don't use, what I don't understand, I can just look it up. Uh, but for a newbie, it's going to, it is tough because I've tried to read these books as a newbie. I'm just like, what's going on? Seriously? It's just, uh, yeah, like these headfirst design patterns. I wish this book was in JavaScript and I would be talking about it all the time. And the reason I don't is because it, these examples are in Java. Um, so I don't know how much it could really help my audience who are largely web developers. That said, object-oriented programming is a really important thing. So I really didn't answer your question that much, but in my experience, it is, it is tough as, as a beginner looking at these, these books that aren't in a web development. <laughs> Midnight Sun, I'm just a girl who can code in the world. It's my Gwen Stefani. Dude, seriously? Does this not look like Gwen Stefani? I'm going to show this and it's going to disappear anyway, but hello. Who came in with the breeze on Sunday morning, Gwen? Head first design patterns, head first design patterns, thought so. Developers, I can't speak today. I'm going to have to have the mod come on, just, just take control of the live stream. <laughs> and, and I don't know what, and just take over. We got some new people here, coding programs. Java was my first language uh, too, but after that, every other thing became easy. That is the one, that is the silver lining of learning something like Java. It's like your second language is so much easier. I really don't consider Java my first language because it was, it was like my zero language. <laughs> I didn't spend all that much time on it. And I just, I'm glad I did fumble with it or yeah, I, I fumbled it. I flailed and fumbled with Java. After I learned JavaScript, though, Python. But Python was an awesome language, and it's it'd be, it was so much easier to learn than JavaScript or Java. Oh my gosh. Anyways, that, that's getting off topic. Madeline says I got how to think like a programmer because it looked really cool, and it claimed that the principles were applicable for all programming languages. But now maybe I need to learn some C plus plus. That is a great book too, which I do have. I have it somewhere. I showed it on a live stream a couple months back, I think, or talked about it on Discord or something. That is a great book. That is a great book, and it is it's C plus plus. But it, I have I've coded what like three lines of C plus plus in my entire life. But still, I mean, you can still get a lot out of it. Um, 
Yeah, because the first chapter, the first chapter doesn't have to do with code. It's more like thinking. I'm just gonna shut up. <laughs> Midnight Sun says my first language was C and C sharp. Ooh, I've always wanted to learn C. There's just something about it. It's 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 timeless. It's classic. It's just C. No no sharps. No pluses, no minuses, no C minus minus, no F sharp, just, just C. Just, it just sounds great. What's going on, Uriah Clark? German Shepherd, Richard Me, one, two, three. What's up, what's up? Draco Vitae says, I have a few good JavaScript books now serving as dies for my monitor. How do you say that word, D-A-I-S? I've read it, I never have used it though. Dan says, try the JavaScript book series from Manning by comparison, O'Reilly is dot, dot, dot. You know, I have one or two Manning books, but I really haven't explored their series all that much. Whoa, uniform malfunction, okay. Let's go back to the comments here. Yeah, we got some green screen LOLs, it's my bad. I, I just love my fish so much, my, my swimming aquatic friends that I can't change. And so my live stream people suffer because of my greed of wanting to see to see some fish. Okay, Mohammed, what's going on? All right, developers. Ed313 Ed says, I just finished the second semester. The teacher taught us code principles with Python. Good. Python is a great first language. I'm seeing more, not boot camps necessarily, but colleges start out with Python, which is a good thing because Python is just such a beginner friendly language. It's never want to use the word easy to use, but it is so silky. It's so, it's, it's a very forgiving language. The same can't be said for Java. But as the other person said in the comments, you know, once you learn Java, everything else is easy. Okay, so the second secret, the second secret weapon for learning how to code Community, community, say it with me, community, 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 <laughs> community. Coding in a bubble is a bad idea. It gets you in bad habits. It makes you think that development is only done in a bubble. And in my opinion, it sets you up for some bad habits. Finding a community can hold you accountable, can show you about the real world of coding. They can cheer you on. You can share ideas with them. You can do a lot of stuff with the community. And as web developers, for us web developers out there, our community is awesome. I was talking about this last night in the Discord too. We were talking about PHP and uh, JavaScript and all this. One of my gripes with, with PHP is that the documentation stinks in the community. When compared to JavaScript, it just, it, it's down here. The JavaScript community is, as much as I want, as much as I do kvetch about JavaScript, the community is awesome. The community is awesome. And the things created by the community are awesome. I've been suffering from JavaScript fatigue for about two years. These new frameworks, these, I was working with Vue, I was working on this contract this week that involved Vue. Dude, and Vlaslo asked me, Vlaslo is one of my, my, my main guys on Discord. He, he asked me, what do I think of Vue? And I said, you know, I think it's okay. And it's not the fault of Vue. This is my problem because I've been suffering from JavaScript fatigue for two years. Um, but even with that fatigue, the community is absolutely fabulous. We are so spoiled with the Mozilla docs, with MDN. If you've ever looked at PHP's documentation, it, it's, it's wretched. It's, it's really bad. It's really bad. And we're so spoiled with MDN. It's such a great resource. And the people building these different, these different things and documenting these different things and helping people out and creating these communities. If you're not part of a tech community, you really are missing out and you're slowing down your coding journey. You're slowing, you're slowing down 
your life. We talk about meetups all the time on this channel too. Meetups are an excellent place. They're an excellent resource. Unfortunately, because of Aunt Rona, um, a lot of them have been canceled. Some of them are going online. I was at a CSS architecture uh, virtual meetup the other week. I went to, uh, what was it? Uh, enterprise architecting for beginners or something. Enterprise, something with, I mean, I've already forgotten it. I have a whole notebook filled with notes, but um, that was a couple of weeks ago. There are a few that have gone online, but once, I mean, once humanity and once society starts opening up again and it's, these events are safe, got to check out a meetup, meet got to check out a meetup. They're awesome. This is where the party faithful go to talk about code. And you're going to meet people there who are in the business. It's great for networking opportunities, introducing yourself, finding a mentor. Mentorship is a big part of the community too. A lot. Um, I was talking last week with Tech Rally. He was live on this channel. We did an interview. Paradoodly, do share that interview. I talked with a senior developer. He's currently employed. We talked about just about everything, even though we totally didn't. It felt like it. And the time just flew by. I was talking with him last week. And we were discussing how, how great the community is in web development for the most part. Um, people are super helpful for the most part. Um, a lot of people, not so much. I mean, let's be real. I've had some pretty terrible experiences, you know, but for, for the most part, like I've had a lot of great experiences that I haven't had in other career fields. There are some places, there are some careers where it is dog eat dog and no one wants to help you. And you'll be searching for years before you find someone on your side, on your team. Not so, not so in this, in this field. Lots of people want to help. And whether you need to learn how closures work or what this ES6 thing is all about, if you've been taking ES5 courses, or you need to learn back in or are confused, what's the difference between PHP and Node? What is this Dino thing people are talking about? By the way, random sidetrack, what are your guys' thoughts on Dino? Because I was gonna do a rant video, but it's just like, I wanna keep the channel positive, but I also am a developer myself and I need a place to vent. But before I go off on a tangent, what are your guys' thoughts on Dino? Should people learn it? What do you think the future of it is? And are you going to learn it? But stuff like that. You know, because when you do it alone, I mean, so much time is spent just researching these things, watching things and reading things and then wondering, did I just waste six days of my life studying something I'm never going to use or something that is just irrelevant or outdated or whatever? A mentor can help you, can help guide you. Um, and I've always said that even if you're, you think you're wasting time, I don't really think it's a waste waste. You're still discovering things about you and your developer life. You're discovering things that you like, things that you want to do. You're discovering things you never knew existed. So there is a big opportunity there in that sense. It's nothing's, I don't think ever any, I don't think anything is ever a complete waste. There, there is a, there, there are many times when you're gonna be not allocating your time in the most efficient way, but as far as just like a total drain pour of the week, I don't believe, I don't believe that's a thing when, when you're on your learning journey. But let's go to the comments about Dino. That's what I really, that's what I really wanna know. Arctech W700 says, where I'm from, there's a PHP community meet up with a large local company, though it's very rarely on. It has given me some great pointers and information. Also good to have the like-mindedness around. That's awesome. I really, you know, in the Midwest, in Minneapolis, there are not, there's not a lot of love for PHP, um, even though it is, I say it all the time on this channel, WordPress is 33% of the web and the backend is PHP. We have a ton of legacy web apps built on PHP. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. And the PHP community, I would have loved to have a PHP community. That is the hardest language to learn when you're a self-taught developer, in my opinion, because the resources just aren't there. People, the, the one thing that gets me every time, people, I get this question, once every few weeks or so, can you recommend a good PHP course? I can recommend some okay PHP courses, but I can't recommend one that I like. I can't recommend one that I think is really good. Um, and I, I, the same can't be said for JavaScript. There are some 
banging JavaScript courses out there. There are some banging backend Node courses out there. Uh, but PHP, there hasn't been a course on that for years that's relevant. And the, this John Duckett book, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, Sarah, if Sarah is here, she knows what I'm talking about because we've talked about this a few times. John Duckett, the esteemed author of JavaScript and jQuery. You guys have seen the book. I don't have it on me, but I have it. I have it somewhere here. He has been he has been teasing us with this PHP and MySQL book for two and a half years now. Apparently, it's coming out this fall, but there have been like three or four pushbacks with the release date. And like, it's just like, John, your publisher's killing me because I've been wanting to recommend this book for two and a half years. I know it's going to be good. I know it's going to be great. John Duckett's books are, are 10 out of 10. He has an HTML and CSS book. He also has the JavaScript and jQuery book, and they're both wonderful. And that could be this this could be a game changer for PHP, but um, this is a, a total tangent, but not really, because community can make up for the lack of resources in a certain area. Now with vanilla JavaScript, you have your resources, but as far like giving you insight, a book can't give you insight that's current for May 22nd, 2020. You know what I mean? Things are changing all the time. And even though these principles are timeless, getting some pointers from the community or getting some feedback with that can help you so much, can help you so much. So uh, whether you do meetups, whether you go find a mentor, whether you're doing Discord stuff, which by the way, Paradoodly do, I know I'm, you're a great mod and I know you've plugged that Discord in the chat. I know you have, so thanks. We have about a thousand members on our Discord. Uh, people are, are really, really cool. We chat, we have fun. People ask coding questions, people get advice, people share advice. Uh, it's just it's just nice. But you know, you don't have to go to my community to find community. There are a ton of discords out there. There are discords based on technology. You know, there's there's JavaScript discords, there's web developer discords, even dare I say Reddit. Reddit is another place where you can at least get additional perspectives. Reddit is um, you know, I lurk on Reddit. But I, I do find a lot of the advice just, or a lot of the posts are really cynical. And um, that's fine. I mean, if that's how that person feels, but just know there's other, there's other perspectives out there. And there's, there's definitely a Reddit, like there's a Reddit feel. You know how YouTube has a feel, these different platforms have different feels. Reddit has a different feel, um, but they do have a community there. So I don't wanna knock it. It could be a great community for you. They're everywhere though. So it, it is really important. Let's go check these comments. Johan, what's going on? Nami B. Nami says, I get that the book of PHP is slow in the making. PHP is changing so much. 7.4 is crazy. So many JS like features. I believe PHP will regain popularity soon. Yeah, you know, PHP gets a bad rap. I understand why people don't like it. The syntax is horrible. Um, and just like I said, the documentation is pretty bad compared to MDN, but stuff like Laravel, PHP 7 really helped PHP's case. And with, you know, with these, with these tweaks, with the 7.4, I haven't checked out the features in 7.4, but, or I haven't used the features I should say in 7.4, but there, there are these things like that. And people, I don't know, I think Laravel is a great, a great thing in PHP's corner right now. And it's it's fun, it's fresh. There is a community, there's a, what is it, Laravel, is it laracasts.com? That's a pretty neat platform. Um, but just something that I don't, I don't usually recommend for beginners because I don't think it's really newbie friendly. But yeah, Coding Program says, John Duckett is the shiznit, agreed. Professor Udd says, 90s coding culture was more about genuine fans, not worrying about a career. I feel like those communities are hidden or gone. Is it possible to code for fun anymore without the stress of a career? That's a great comment. That's a great question. I wonder the same thing. I wonder the same thing. There is, this is my, this is my theory, and um, I could be wrong, but this is what I've noticed. Back in the day, the web was for fans. It was for enthusiasts. 
and it was a hobby. And once we started getting cheaper computers, we started getting this internet connect. Internet became cheap. Internet became ubiquitous. Internet was everywhere. Then it was it it was just like a utility. It was just like a utility. And it became so commercialized because that's where the money was and the, the e-commerce, Amazon, and all of this, this mind share, and all of these people, billions of people online. There were the, the, the powers that be turning it into this quest for making money. And then we had stuff like, and I'm going everywhere with this, but hear me out. We have stuff like Bootstrap and these things that make web pages look all the same. Now, the web from the 90s and 2000s was very imperfect, but it had some soul. The same can't be said for the modern web. And I've been, I mean, I've, I'm still an enthusiast, but things have definitely changed. And I, I don't know what the answer to your question is. That's a great question. Can people still just code for fun? Make, make fun programs. Where I code for fun, I don't, I don't code the web for fun, but um, Doing stuff, in Lin doing stuff in the terminal is really fun. Working with Linux is really fun. Um, Ubuntu, and <laughs> shout out to Mahjong desktop, desktop game on Ubuntu, but a lot of my fun stuff, my element is in the terminal and I just love working with it. And I will do that for fun, just, just to see where I can go and explore it. Uh, but we have, I mean, where do you go for people who just wanna have fun? I think a lot of people using Linux, there are a lot of hobbyists in Linux and I think maybe that that enthusiasm for the web has shifted to other niches. Uh, Linux is a, is a great example of that because even on YouTube, you still have you see people who who just love it, who just love it to love it. They're not making money on it. Their YouTube channels, you know, they may have a few thousand subscribers, but there's this guy, Big Daddy Linux. He had he had these massive live streams, and at the time, I think he had like five, not even ten thousand subscribers, but he would have like 20, 30 people on these live streams and people just talking about how, you know, how they tricked out their system and what they were doing with Linux, just, just everything about it. And that was cool to see that there were still some old school style people who were just in it for the soul of it. And because it was a fun hobby and, you know, honestly, if web developers and software developers didn't get paid 120, $220,000 a year, I wouldn't be doing this channel. People, there, there is a resurgence in this, in web development because it, it pays well. There's been a lot of media coverage, even though, you know, media is pretty much dead. Legacy media is dead. I, I remember I had a student subscription to the New York Times. They were really pushing the coding boot camps. So instead of a hobby, instead of like, oh, look at these little creeps in their basement making this script. It's not like, oh, look at these creeps working at Google making a quarter million a year plus plus benefits. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what else to add to that, but that is an interesting observation. It's something I do think about a lot because I don't use the web like I used to. I use it as a business mostly. I use it for community too, but primarily when I log on in the morning, when I get up, it's not to surf the web, you know? And I think discovery of new things is, is getting harder. There's such, a, there's such a concentration of these different platforms. I mean, before Facebook, we had, we had things we could customize like MySpace. You could actually customize the CSS on MySpace. And that's how a lot of people got interested in web development. That was their, their first experience. They, they have those, those, those awesome memories of customizing their friend's MySpace page and tricking it out and making it look cool. And those things were so fun. There's no user, there's no user serviceable parts on Facebook. You can't change the colors. You can't, I knew, I knew where that platform was headed when they told me I had to use my real name. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. The only person who knows, who needs to know my real name is the freaking IRS on a good day. So we're not going to be doing, I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, but I'm getting off topic. Let's go to the comments. Rebecca, what's up? She says, I was coding HTML, made a website that profiled bands I liked and talked to lots of people on listservs, Usenet. I didn't know coding could be a career. Troy Mitchell said, what's a good choice to build mobile apps, something like Groupon, React Native, Xamarin, and other coding programs. I remember only being able to access the internet at the library or at cafes, right? Yeah, like it was, 
it was a it was a privileged thing you know like I, we didn't have a computer i didn't have a computer growing up we didn't have a we didn't have internet we did we did get a pc my dad brought home my, my aunt is a huge gamer dude like back in she's been a gamer my whole dad's side of the family they're, they're gamers tabletop they would have family reunions they would be doing you know 48 hour campaigns on some tabletop game what's the name what's the brand of those games it's like they specialize in war games and the map takes up the entire dining room table and they take the campaigns to like take like three or four days do you guys know which games i'm talking about they, they, they specialize in like world war ii and these different these different wars i think they might have some maritime adventures too but um for the most part yeah so she was a huge gamer and then you know pcs came out she got some pcs she got she got she cashed in on that and um she was she was upgrading and my dad bought her computer he bought her compact from her and he brought it home and we ended up on what did we get we got like a starcraft and um there is this game called like hodge and podge or something there were these two i've been trying to find out the name of this game for forever and if anyone knows it hit me up it was like hodge and podge or pip and pop or something and there were these jesters i don't know that that was like my first that was our first one of our first games at home but going back to the point if you wanted internet you'd have to go to a school a library or a cafe and at the cafes they had the one computer terminal that that person that it was a half hour sign up sheet and that person was pushing 45 minutes to go to the barista and be like yo my my time's on and the person's still on the computer like people love the internet and it was like who knows they could have been doing anything they could have been doing anything but now you know you see someone on a computer at a cafe they're probably on facebook or working with a spreadsheet it's like the, the diversity of the web has really changed um and this is something i could talk about forever because it's so interesting but the real thing says warhammer no i wish if i remember I'll, uh, I'm gonna do a live stream <laughs> because of that game. And you had to do different puzzles and it was like middle middle earth. I don't know. I don't know. Rebecca says the web got serious when people started making money. Mm-hmm, exactly. Rebecca also says when I was first coding, there was no CSS. Coding program says Ubuntu rocks. The only thing is mounting your SD card after install. Hey, Alex, what's going on? Yusuf says in my country, women are not even associated with computers. When you say computer, you would mostly think male with a machine. Yusuf, are you, I'm looking at your last name. Are you in Turkey? Are you talking about Turkey? Interesting. Donovan Dungeons and Dragons. No, it was not Dungeons and Dragons. It was not Dungeons and Dragons, although <sighs> Avalon Hill, Midnight Sun. Yes, the tabletop games, the tabletop games that last four and five days, Avalon Hill. They had family reunions, my uncles and my aunt, and I would come with. It could be at my dad's, it could be at our home, it could be somewhere at my uncle's, my aunt's, wherever. They would all gather for a week in the summer, come up, my uncle lives in Texas, he would drive up, in the freaking Ford Aerostar, like it was a big deal. And so we'd, it was in summer and the kids would go over and it'd be like, man, auntie and uncle are playing the game again. My dad's playing the game, like, ah, I'm bored. But it was like, <laughs> cause I wanted to play a game, but it was like, not for kids. Avalon Hill games are not for kids. It was cool seeing though. It was cool seeing because even though like they weren't engaging with the kids because they're busy playing a game, uh, I could watch tv which we didn't have cable like it was a big thing like mtv was a big thing back then too like times were different <laughs> just going back to these comments here freeware alex alex name dropped freeware yeah man i was this is a funny thing too there were just a lot of there are a lot more diyers back in the day and people just made their own tools and made their own things and the discoverability again we, we didn't have this huge emphasis on seo like did we even have seo people were just writing to write and do just to, just to create i was on this old website the other night fontfreak.com 
this website has been around forever and it's a bunch of freeware. It's a bunch of free fonts. Um, and, and it's just like thousands of fonts you will never see on Google fonts. It just breaks my heart when I see these tutorials or I'm like, you know, assessing, doing like some competitive analysis or whatever and seeing how these people do their courses. Every time they install a font, it's from Google fonts. It's like, dude, there's more to life than Google fonts. There's more to life than Google. There's so much out there. And Font Freak, fortunately, I, I showed some love to Font Freak in this course I'm working on. And we're, we're installing a font from Font Freak. So rest assured, Yusuf says, yes, I'm in Turkey. There's women fighting about it. I mean, Turkey is not that sexist, but culture doesn't allow that to change that fast. Yeah, culture, yeah, he's, yeah, that's a great point. Culture is, it takes a long time to establish and a long time to transform. That's a really interesting comment. And um, speaking of culture, I was, I was watching this woman, Erica, I forget her name, Curtis Davis. I saw him in the chat. I'm like, the YouTube algorithm knows me and is trying to, to push me to these videos that my subscribers are watching. Eric, was it Erica? Man, what's her name? Anyways, she is this businesswoman in Texas. She's super, she's just en fuego. She's en fuego with everything, man. I love her live streams. And if I can remember her name, I'll have Kara Doodley share it. If, you're, if she has great business insights and her, her live streams are absolutely killer. But she was talking about company culture and how uh, as an employer, she doesn't want to do, she doesn't want to do uh, work from home because when her people work from home, she can't establish a company culture. And I thought that was really interesting because I was, I never thought about it that way. I'm like, that's right. Like, how do you establish expectations? How do you establish that culture if people are working remotely? And like, you know, these places like Facebook and Google that are doing work from home until whenever, at least till 2021, how are you onboarding your people and how do you establish that culture? Just through a slideshow? Methinks not, that's not gonna work. As Yusuf said, culture is, is very slow to change, it's especially, especially when it's massive, like the culture of Google and Facebook and stuff. So uh, Erica Williams, that's her name. She has a, a great channel for anyone interested in, um, in business and trucking. I don't know. Do we have any aspiring truckers here? Truck, truck owners, 18 wheeler people, but yeah. Rebecca says, use the web to connect with people to trade mixtapes and bootlegs. Yeah. You know, back in the day, there was like people and you could, you could share your address. You could share things about you. You could send things to people and exchange things with people. I had a pen pal. I, I met this person in Lithuania who was really being into, big into music and we traded stuff and mixtapes and different, you know, paper products and things that people overseas in different countries would find interesting. Whereas if they're here, they're like, nah, this is all right. But, you know, once you send it to someone in another country, it becomes really interesting, like cards and different paper things. Okay, so this is getting way off topic here. I have really been enjoying this conversation. Uh, if you haven't hit the like button yet and you are here, please do me a favor and smash it royally. Tell YouTube that we matter. So, okay, so we're talking about secret weapons for learning how to code. And I went on a big tangent. So let's get back. We talked about books. We talked about community. And now this is the third one. This is the third and final one. Journaling slash personal documentation. I have kept a journal since I was eight years old and it's helped me in so many ways. It is great for stress. It's great for anxiety. It's great for just keeping a record outside of your brain of what happened. When I went to my first open source conference, what did I do? I took a notebook. I took a journal. When I work on big projects and I'm learning things, what do I do? I keep a journal. At my enterprise job, what was the first thing I brought to work? A journal. I have a thick, I have multiple journals from that job because every day I was scribbling things page after page after page. And I go through these things. I was just looking at one of these journals the other night and I was looking through it. I was like, this is the markings of a serial killer. Like these scribbles and scratches are just so violent, like hastily written, but I was learning so much stuff. If I hadn't written that, written that down, I would have never known it. I would have completely forgotten it the next day. 
And so having a record of what you're learning, of what you accomplished, of what you're having trouble with, it somehow, I don't know how, but it opens up your brain in different ways when you compare it to not keeping a journal. Keeping a journal can only help you. And one of the misconceptions about journaling is that you have to do it every day or you have to be really professional and be like, dear diary, like it's your journal. You can do it however you want. You could even do a collage, whatever, whatever way you want to express it in your coding journey. And these, these things that you write down that you bullet point down in your journal. Okay. ESX is frustrating me. Object oriented programming is frustrating me. Design patterns are frustrating me. You get it down in that journal and all of a sudden it's not just an anxiety in your head, but it's a real thing. And then you can, it's just something else to check off the list. It's just something else to just check off the list. I cannot recommend personal documentation enough, AKA journaling. You don't need a fancy journal. I like my fancies. I like my V5s, okay? I don't even have my V5 in here. I feel naked and afraid. Yes, I do. You know what? Yes, I do. This is my favorite pen model in the entire world. This is my precise V5 with a little custom color there for just for some flavor. I love my writing utensils. I don't know where I'd be without my journals. They have helped me so much in my coding journey that I would be half the developer if I had not opted in to writing things down. You also don't, I mean, you don't need, if you don't prefer pen and paper or whatever, use your computer. Just use notepad or something and then, you know, do it however you want to do it. But that way, like I said, you're going to be learning so much stuff. You're going to be learning so much stuff that your brain says, okay, this isn't important to me right now. So what does your brain do? It just shoots it out the door and <laughs> never to be seen again. But when you have a, these notes, they're all of a sudden jogging your brain. And it just, like I said, I get misty eyed talking about journals because I not only keep them for my tech journey and my activities in tech, but also my offline activities. And so it really is, it's, it's a personal a growth tool that I use. It's also like a lifestyle tool that I use. It's not just a tool. It's just something I do. It's my, one of my hobbies. I love journaling. People, when they give me birthday presents and, and Christmas presents and stuff, people who know me get me a journal. They give me a real nice one and I love it. I love it. It's so thoughtful. But yeah, let's go to the comments. Do we have any other journalers here? LimeWire and Napster, okay, coding programs, you're, you're referencing, you're definitely referencing and speaking my language. Whoa, whoa, the comments are on fire. Candace Leach is here. Dr. Candace, where is my, <laughs> hey, hold on. Dr. Candace has entered the chat. What's up, Candace? <laughs> These um, the chat here is absolutely going so fast. I cannot, I cannot pause this to see the comments. Candace says, "Turn my journal into the math behind machine learning notes and projects." Madeline says, "I love pens." Right? Right. She says, "I'm addicted to buying journals." I've been using Evernote, says Jonathan. Yeah, just try it. Just try it. And it, you know, like I said, you don't have to do it every day. I try to journal every day. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I go in phases. Sometimes I, I, sometimes I enter five pages worth of material. Sometimes it's like two lines. Sometimes it's just, sometimes I just draw. Um, and for an example, recently, this is where journaling also comes in handy. I was working on, can I go on a tangent real quick? <laughs> I go to my stats, everyone has left the chat. I just need to get this off my mind. The, starting up a modern JavaScript application is the biggest pain in the butt. Speaking of old school stuff, what happened in the days where you just double click an, an index.html file, see the site and be on your way? You got to go in the terminal. You got to set your port. You got to fire up the thing, fire up the server and all this other crap. Oh, by the way, 25 NPM packages have a moderate to severe security risk. Update now. Oh, 
by the way, your ABCD XYZ Alpha Omega dot JPEG package is outdated. Cannot update due to fatal error. Seriously? Seriously. It's just a photo gallery. Why do I need a freaking photos? <laughs> okay, everyone, I was about to uh, lose my monetization there. Why, wh why do we need all this crap? It's, it's so fatiguing. This is why I have JavaScript fatigue. Anyway, I was troubleshooting this doggone node server for five friggin' hours the other night just to see the application. I wasn't even coding in it. I wasn't even trying to refactor it or rewrite it or anything. I was just trying to get it to work. So five hours go by and I'm writing down everything. I'm writing down my ports. I'm writing down my error messages because you, yes, you have your terminal, you have your error logs, but slowly but surely you do the same 12 actions hour after hour. You open up, you end up, you end up just getting on this hamster wheel. You're like, wait, did I, did I change port 80? Did, did, did I tell this to fire up a port 3000? Wait, so what did I do? I started writing that stuff down. And when I was journaling it, I don't, I mean, documenting, journaling, whatever you want to call it. I was writing it down. And so I could say, okay, did I try this? Yes, I did. Check. That doesn't work. What if I did step one, six, and two and took those out of order and, and tried them that way, some various permutation of what I've been trying for the last five freaking hours. And it helped, it helped. It really helped organize my mind. And there's just so many things that you have a limit at how many things you can keep at your, in your mind at any one time. And when it comes to JavaScript, when it comes to modern full stack JavaScript apps, I am so swift, I am so soon, I am so soon to just flip a table and swiftly quit my job. I get so triggered. And I just, I never, I never, I, I never got over it. Every time I get those errors, because I'm a perfectionist like that. I'm like, I like a nice clean terminal. Every time I'm trying to open up a project or I, you know, fork something and open it on my local machine, I get the NPM errors. I get warning, warning, warning. And like, you know, complete lockdown, you hear the bar, the jail bars go down, the prison bars slam, and the red lights go on, and the sirens go off in my, and it's all in my head, and people are looking at me like I'm freaking crazy. They've never, they've never worked with NPM before, clearly. <laughs> there is a certain phase when, when I have, when I'm working with NPM. NPM has like 350,000 packages right now. It's, it's out of control. It is really, it's too much. It's just too much. Now, granted, obviously I'm not using 350,000 dependencies for my project, uh, but it's just the sheer number of it. It's just unsustainable. That's my rant. Main Street Studio says, I wish one day, what's up Main Street, how's it going? I wish one day I'll be on the live telling my story. I'm not equipped yet, but I promise I'll buy some inspired and motivated by Donovan Live. Yes, absolutely. I love having guests on the show. We didn't have one today. I just, um, you know, I haven't, I feel really, my schedule is really weird because last month we were doing the lives every day until we flattened the curve or, you know, we were doing live streams for weeks every day and now they're once a week. And I'm just like, I miss my subscribers. I miss you guys. I really feel, I really love the lives. I really love connecting with the audience and talking with you guys and seeing what you're up to. So welcome new subscribers. Alex says servers. Ugh, I know, I know, I know. Rebecca says, yup, web dev is so much more complicated now. Package fatigue, dependency hell. Totally. Yeah, she says, I think with tutorials, it just becomes watching someone installing packages. And that's the thing too. That's my that's my critique too, is that you know, people it's like, a, it's a, it's a bet. This is a funny thing. This is a funny thing. And I, I do sense some elitism here in, in some in situations where people are like, yeah, WordPress is really, it, it's not secure and it's not safe because of all these third party add-ons. And I'm just like, what the heck is NPM dude? Really? Really? And I, I, I don't disagree with them. Like third party code, it can be very dangerous. Third party code is a great vector for attack for hackers. 
third party code could be written by a hacker. Do you really think those 350,000 packages or however freaking many, can someone look that up real quick? How many, how many packages are there currently in NPM? There's no way all those hundreds of thousands of packages have been vetted. It is just, it's just waiting. It's just, I just, I just see it waiting to explode. And interestingly enough, I was chatting with one of the uh, maintainers for the NPM CLI. And I asked her, it was an ask me anything. And I asked her, what does she think the future of JavaScript is? And she said, um, to, be, to be honest, I think in the last, the next 10 years, J JavaScript is gonna be on its last legs. Uh, that isn't a, that isn't like a fear statement. I'm not like, oh, watch out. It was an interesting perspective as someone who had worked directly with NPM for years, like can't get much closer to, to NPM working in her job. And so she, she has a lot of experience with that. It was really interesting to see. Um, and, you know, she had mentioned WebAssembly and, and all that stuff, uh, which is really exciting. So it is, it'll, that'll be exciting to see where JavaScript is going and where these massive package managers and these dependencies, what's gonna happen with them. There's just too freaking many, dude. Donovan says, I've gotten used to it at this point, but I understand the NPM installation server on this port fatigue. <laughs> Troy said, yeah, exactly. You know, and I didn't even, for me, it's always been, oh, I'm sick of JavaScript. You know what? I'm not sick of JavaScript. I'm sick of the add-ons and the extras. I think, I think that's my, my real fatigue. My real fatigue is just, is, is the setup. And, and the errors and the moderate to severe warnings and like the continuous updates. I don't, you know, there are obviously there are some, some problems inherent in, in JavaScript, the language, but my, my bigger trigger is, is all these freaking packages. Rebecca says it's cleansing to not use NPM, any kind of preprocessors, libraries and frameworks. It is, it is, it's organic. It's organic and it is, that's where going back to that one person who commented on, you know, how the web has changed, a lot of why it's changed and a lot, a lot of why it functions all the same and it looks all the same is because of these frameworks. They're very, very overbearing. Bootstrap is awesome, but it's also very boring. Everyone uses it. And so how do you create, how do you create a unique culture or a unique niche or a unique area for people when all this stuff when all this stuff just does the same thing and it looks exactly like it's the same freaking three colors it's your off white it's your gray and like a business blue it's your corporate blue it's just like how do people how do we get that creativity back i don't know let's see Dan says, I think backend development is much more challenging than front end due to the fact that the languages and programming landscape is changing in a more frequent, frequent rate on that front. Rick Cable, what's going on? Troy says, that's why I like the .NET stack, better security. You know, I, I have come to respect .NET as the months go by, as the years go by. Every month that I'm working with the modern, modern web stacks, the modern tech stacks, and I see what .NET is up to. I'm just like, man, Microsoft is doing something right. They have, and I just, I, I forgot, I just published this article on TypeScript. I forgot that TypeScript was brought to us by Microsoft, which is another thing that is just like, wow, they really are bringing some value to the table. And it's not just a reinvention of the same two wheels. But I've never, I've never coded in dot, I've never used dot net, I've never dabbled in it, I've only looked at it, I've looked at Blazor, which is another awesome thing, full stack apps and C sharp, that's really promising, that's really promising, they're doing, I mean, Visual Studio Code was a big one, WSL was a big one, they're, they have these products, they have these tools they're releasing that are just, they're just fire, they're total fire. And I never thought I'd be saying that about Microsoft, but they are doing some really great stuff. Hey, TGIF, indeed. Mohammed says web dev will die. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious what the future will be. Republic of Common Sense says, I miss old days, something like full top bar navigation written only in CSS. Yeah, when I'm trying to find a solution for something, I try to avoid JavaScript as much as possible. And it's not because I don't wanna like, oh, JavaScript. It's just because a lot of people just use JavaScript just to say they did, just to be like, yeah. 
I'm a JavaScript developer. If you don't need it, don't code it. And it's funny too, because even though we use Stack Overflow for just about everything as developers, so many of these coding examples are written in jQuery and they're, they're voted as the top answer. Well, yeah, these, answer, these questions and answers were, were submitted six, seven years ago. And as the years go by, these are the most popular posts that have you know, 5,000 upvotes or whatever. But even though the top answer is, is the, the number one answer, you probably don't wanna be actively developing in jQuery, let alone copying and pasting in jQuery. I mean, I mean, there may be some except, exceptions, but for like new projects and stuff, pro probably not, probably not, even though I love jQuery. Donovan says, ain't gonna lie, I used to love Bootstrap back in the day, especially if I wanted to focus purely on logic and server practices and not design a UI setup for an app. Yeah, you, absolutely, totally. We have such a huge responsibility already to make these things work, to get to the logic, to get these things working, like UX and UI is, is a very intense thing. And it, there's a lot of things you have to think about and do to make, it, to make it pleasing for people. And now, because again, going back to the fact that these web applications are making millions of dollars, you want people to stick on your site. So the UX UI is super important. So why would you risk it? And why would you want to spend weeks on it when you can just use Bootstrap? I mean, I've used Bootstrap. I freaking rock the heck out of it for a lot of different projects just to be just to be like okay now i can get i can just get this thing up and running and there's you know there's no shame in it it's just because it is so easy to use you see it everywhere and people the electricity follows the path of least resistance if there's something out there that's free and it looks good and it's easy to use of course why not do it but yeah, we're seeing, fortunately, we are seeing, I would like to see more, just a, a better diversity of different, just front end like UX UI options. React and these various material UI and all this other stuff, it looks nice, but it definitely has that Google smell to it. You know, like code smells? I, 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 I smell these UX, there's UX UI smells. I'm like, oh, bootstrap, no oh, material. Like they're very, distinct in my nose but it's yeah it's 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 crazy this i don't know anyone use linux yes heck yeah linux these chat this, the chat is on fuego thanks everyone for for these comments jo johan says the only thing they haven't done right is windows no i know like their biggest product right their flagship product man and that's it too like I would be a huge, I, I already am enthusiastic about these various products, but as far as like a Microsoft fangirl, if it wasn't for bloatware and the spyware known as Windows 10, I'd be all about it. Uh, I can forgive Steve Ballinger for saying the awful things he did about open source. I mean, bygones are bygones, right? But and that Windows 10, man, I think a lot of people forget too, like Windows 10 was hated when it first came out. Now we've just kind of accepted it. And the UI is actually beautiful. But as far as being able to use it, like I have a hard time with it. So I, I, I did use Windows in Enterprise. We were using WSL and it just, I don't know. I just don't like it. That's just me. Let's see. Rebecca says on the front facing sites, we use Bootstrap or Foundation as starters on huge projects. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. One of the best UX UIs I've seen is Quora and Twitter. Dan says, I have seen several implementations that move from .NET to Java due to lack of developers. Yeah. I would love to talk more about .NET. And in fact, I'm going to write, I'm going to write this down. I want to have a .NET developer on here. I want to have an experienced .NET developer on here to tell us and share with us not only their .NET journey, but also what is .NET? What is .NET? And how do you, what are the job prospects and what can you do with it? And who, who uses it? .NET is huge in my area. .NET is huge in the Midwest, uh, especially when the web 
started exploding in the 90s and people, these companies were getting on board with it. A lot of old school .NET shops out in my area. And again, .NET is, is, is coming back with Blazor and stuff. It, not like it ever went away, but I think something like, I think you have, you almost have to have a framework in order for it to appeal to, to new developers. That's just like, you know, with the fancy, the fancy promotional materials and all this other stuff like, oh, you have a framework? Tell me more. There are a lot of careers out there in software development that are just not appealing to new developers and younger developers. Proprietary languages, for example, where I worked, uh, we were using proprietary languages developed by IBM. There are not a lot of people out there that want to use IBM languages. There, there just aren't. These are, these are good money jobs. They, they're everywhere. And even stuff like COBOL, we're seeing that now with the unemployment problems with these mainframe computers in, in the United States for unemployment insurance. People are having problems with that because the system's overwhelmed. Somebody here, this was interesting. Somebody here actually got a COBOL job with the government the other week. They were unemployed. They taught themselves COBOL and now they're, they're on a contract or de facto employed by, by their state government or whatever government organization. It was such a cool story. Is that person here? If you are, let us know. That was, that was really cool to hear. But I would love to get a .NET de developer on here just because there are these pockets of development that aren't mainstream. And so, you know, being on YouTube, there is a bias. Listen, this channel has thousands of subscribers. These videos get thousands of views. People come and tune in. I'm not going to spend an hour and a half talking about IBM proprietary languages because that's, I mean, it's just not interesting to most people. That said, there is a career there. So it's just another going back to these, going back to our main topic of, of secrets for learning how to code. Don't just stick to one platform because there is a bias on YouTube. Of course, we're going to talk about the stuff that most people are interested in because that's what gets us subscribers. That's what people want to hear about. But I also want people who, who may be on the fence or not even, not even knowing that these areas exist, .NET is a, is a great career track. There's a lot of stuff happening right now. And there's a lot of stuff that just never went away. We just don't talk about it. Proprietary languages, not just IBM, um, but these other companies too. A lot of, some companies have developed their own in-house languages that you will never see online. Um, there's a lot out there. There's, let me just, there's just a lot out there that unfortunately, because of the way that YouTube is set up, because of the way that I get rewarded from YouTube, I just, it doesn't make sense for me to talk about certain topics. So do know, do know, and then we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up, but do know that these, these opportunities are out there, even if YouTubers aren't talking about them. So it looks like we have a super chat. Holy smokes! Donovan with the $14.99 super chat, Appreciate you and Suburban Black Boy Radio with the 499 super chat. Thank you guys for that. I really appreciate that. I, I am motivated getting these super chats. Thank you very much. Candace says there's a healthcare startup in NYC that uses .NET. Interesting. Interesting. I'm in healthcare. We use .NET and Java, says Rick. Rebecca says I use .NET, but I wouldn't consider myself a .NET dev. I just work on themes built within .NET. So in the end, I'm mostly using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. BK Pro 24 says enterprises are all about .NET here in the DC area. Sabin Codes, hey RTC, I'm new here. How is it going? Rick Cable says, don't get me started about Salesforce and their coding language. Yeah, that's another example. That's another example that coding or coding sales, Salesforce. There's actually somebody who did contract work in the Discord, in the RTC Discord, who talked about Salesforce. And it's it sounds like enterprise hell in my from what he said. It just there are just little hints that reminded me of my time in enterprise. And it just it just reminded me of like a real grind. Uh, but again, don't let my bias stop you from exploring these options. Salesforce is huge. Salesforce is huge. And there's a lot of Snoopy and pushy recruiters on LinkedIn trying to get you to work for Salesforce or sales, Salesforce, Salesforce, one of their affiliates. So yeah, developers in my neck of the woods, it's 509 and I'm going to wrap it up. I wanna, I wanna thank you all for joining me tonight. Let's recap what we talked about. 
secret weapons for learning how to code. Number one, books. I apologize for my green screen, which was not showing my amazing books, but these just arrived this week. It's a really good titles. Whether you're a code newbie, intermediate, advanced, whatever, do yourself a favor, try a book. Just try it. If you don't like it, I mean, obviously you don't have to stick with it, but it might open your mind up. It might, it might do things for you. Number two, secret weapon for learning how to code, community, community. Number three, secret weapon, journaling slash personal documentation. You could even turn personal documentation into a YouTube channel. There are a lot of cool smaller YouTube channels out there that, that use it for documentation. Just like, hey guys, I'm checking in Craig Wadding, Coda45. He does, he, he does kind of like accountability videos where he just talks about you know, what he's up to, his challenges, what's going on in his life. I like those community channels and those uh, those those personal personal smaller channels. Tech Rally, he he has some really cool videos. He does advice videos. He does insight videos. Uh, I I don't, I don't know if, if his YouTube channel is is for personal documentation, but what I'm saying is there can be various you can various implementations of journaling. It could be video. It could be print. It could be on your computer. Whatever, but. It just it, you could just write it down when you're getting errors with your npm issues yeah we also talked about my gaming aunt and my gaming family avalon hill and that secret game i'm still thinking about that i for whatever reason i want to think it's called hodge and podge or pip and pop and it's totally not and i'll let you guys know when i figure it out so thank you developers for making this live stream super fun once again. I, I, I cannot speak today, so I don't know what that's about. Probably just need some chicken fingers, to be honest. That usually fixes most of my problems. Whatever. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. If you want to continue the conversation, check out the Discord server Paradoodly Do. Hey, Paradoodly Do dropped a super chat. Thank you, Paradoodly contributing to the collection plate. I appreciate you. Thank you for the super chats. Donovan, dropping the super chat and Suburban Black Boy Radio. I really appreciate it. These live streams are informal. It's the Fish Fry Friday. We talk just about everything. As you saw, we had some great tangents. All right, I'm logging off developers. I will see you in the Discord. I will see you in the next video. And as I always announce, these goodbyes are very awkward. So let's just get the awkwardness over with. See you later, have a good day.